Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Musky Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. By Grilla Grills of Holland, Michigan, makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling or smoking skills. More information at GrillaGrills.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors and thank you so much for joining us this week. We have a very unique show. We're going to kick things off on this week's episode above the bridge, way above the bridge on Isle Royal, doing a little brook trout fishing. Our own Gabe Van Warmer was recently up there with some friends. I tell you what, you won't want to miss that. What a cool part of our state. After that, we're going to drop below the bridge down to the mighty Osable River, where I'm going to get a lesson on how to become a better fly fisherman and maybe catch a couple of trout while we're at it. And if you have some wild turkey still left in your freezer from this past hunt, I tell you what, you won't want to miss this. We have a really cool wild turkey recipe on this week's episode. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes. Here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan. Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By AnglerQuest Pontoons, a mid-Michigan company building boats for fishermen by fishermen. AnglerQuest Pontoons are designed for comfort and functionality. On the web at anglerquestpontoons.com. By Huron Lady River Cruises in Port Huron, offering daily sightseeing trips and private cruises for all ages. Sightseers will experience the International Blue Water Bridge, Great Lakes Freighters, the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, and more. Huron Lady River Cruises on the web at huronlady.com. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. After a long 55 mile run across Lake Superior from Eagle Harbor, we arrived at Isle Royal. A quick visit to the gas dock and another run to our campsite and we were home, or what would serve as home for the next few days. We would be staying in one of the three sided shelters that are scattered around the island. Being it was May, the nights were down into the 30s and the days weren't much warmer. The shelters really helped keep the wind off at night. Mark and Jake Romanek had plans to shoot a couple shows with Travis White and his dad Dennis. We would be fishing the island for pike, lakers, and brook trout. You couldn't ask for a better place to eat a hearty, grill-cooked meal. After a bitter cold night, we dragged ourselves out of the sleeping bags and Travis got a pot of coffee going. On the island, there's very few amenities. Over in Rock Harbor, there is some lodging, but by and large, this is a wilderness experience. Everything you pack in needs to be packed out. Once we got a little breakfast and some coffee, we hopped in the boats and had about a 20-minute boat ride to get to a nice bay where we'd be fishing brook trout. 
So one of the things that we like to do when we're fishing for these uh, small trout, like these coasters, is just take these jerk baits and roll the barbs down on each treble. And what that does is it allows, uh, when we hook these fish, it allows us to really easily get this hook out of their mouth uh, once we get them in the net so that we're not uh, causing you know, a little more tear up to the, uh, the gills and the jaw than we need to. Um, with the barbless hooks, these, these fish will stay on this bait all the way to the net without any problem. As long as you're keeping proper tension on your line, you're never going to lose a fish because you don't have a barb. Um, really, the critical thing is, as you get them into the net, you know, make sure you don't give that fish any slack or you know that bait might throw. Um, but once you do get them in the net, the nice thing is, as those fish start flopping, uh, the, a lot of times they will actually throw the bait in the net and uh, therefore they won't cause any further damage or harm to the fish. So I like to use barbless, it really helps these fish out and you're not going to lose any fish because of it if you keep good line tension. You know, originally here we started with a two-prong approach and essentially that approach was to uh, to use a spinner to cover water fast and also to use a jerk bait. Um, but quite honestly, the jerk bait seems to be a better presentation today. So we both switched over to jerk baits. And uh, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Beautiful. Very nice, very nice. Think, Travis. You bet. What a beautiful fish. Now, people that like trout covet brook trout like no other and it's obvious to see why they're beautiful fish they are probably the best eating at least in my opinion of all the trout species uh, this one is not going to get eaten this one's another male and he's going to go back and grow up a little bit but Isle Royal has got it going on for brook trout man that is a cool thing thank you Travis Woo, baby Boy, oh, you gotta love that. <laughs> I love brook trout, man. <laughs> they make up for, uh, you know, they're not necessarily the biggest fish, but they definitely make up for it in beauty. And look at the place where they live. Is there any go more gorgeous country in God's green earth than where we're at right now? Isle Royal. It's beautiful. Little shoulders on them. <laughs> Boy, this is my favorite type of fishing out here, Mark. I can see why. This is a pretty fish here. Well, that's beautiful fish, Travis. That is absolutely a gorgeous fish. So that's Nile Royal Coaster. Basically a coaster brook trout is a brook trout in Lake Superior that uh, lives out in the open lake and uh, it actually spawns out in the lake or in some of the uh, small tributaries here. We'll pop that jerk out and we'll send this guy on. Away he goes. Right back where he came from. <laughs> that's a beautiful thing. Good job. Good job. Well, that's a great start. It is a very good start here. If you're interested in coming to Isle Royal, there's a variety of ways you can get here. Uh, there's a ferry, of course, that you can get on and, uh, and you can bring the ferry across and you can bring your own boat on the ferry, which is kind of cool. Um, a lot of people do that, of course. Um, we opted to actually bring our own boats across and we ran all the way across from Eagle Harbor um, to Isle Royal, and that distance is about, oh, approximately 55 miles or so. So obviously you gotta pick your weather days when you're gonna do that. And um, we're a little bit stranded here at this point in time. You know, we have to stay on the island until we get a good weather window to go home. Um, so this is not the kind of place you're gonna come and bring your boat if you're on a really limited schedule and you have to be back on a certain day. And, um, but we just built enough time in our schedule that we could stay until the weather gets good again. What's the worst that could happen? We have to stay on Isle Royal and fish an extra day or two? It's a beautiful thing. That's pretty cool. How many times did we cast that spot before that trout? Oh, fit? geez, several. Yeah. yeah. Probably have been a dozen the... casts in there before that fish finally caught. Right? It was just finally time. <laughs> That's cool. That fish was laying right up in the shallows, maybe in two or three feet of water. And uh, that might have been the second twitch of the reel after uh, that, that lure hit the water. Well, another, another spunky fish here. Just a beautiful Isle Royal coaster. So a little bit of history on the coaster brook trout in Lake Superior is that uh, coaster brook trout were actually wiped out to the point of near extinction uh, back in the late 1800s when people really started moving into this area at the peak of the timber and mining uh, booms up in the Keweenaw Peninsula and the south shore of Lake Superior. And because these coasters are so aggressive, uh, they're relatively easy to catch and they were very vulnerable to fishing pressure. So a lot of those fish got caught out of the lake and because they're so slow growing, it took a long time for them to recover. Um, however, recently there's a bit of a success story with coaster brook trout in that uh, due to some very conservative regulations, there's uh, 
a one fish per day limit on Lake Superior and that brook trout has to be over 20 inches in order to keep. And folks that are out here fishing for brook trout on any regular basis are typically into catch and release fishing, uh, maybe with the exception of fish that are fatally hooked or fish that uh, would be a, a wall hanger, I guess. Um, so with some of these uh, recent changes in the regulations and management and also with some of the modern practices for forestry and mining, these fish have really had a chance to rebound and especially in places like Isle Royal where the natural environment has been very well preserved over time, these coasters are really able to flourish and hopefully that continues to happen across Lake Superior and in the future maybe we'll see a really good healthy population of coasters once again. I'm going to come back here by you a little bit here, Travis, because he's got me in a kind of a predicament here. What a beautiful fish. Look at the sunshine on that. That don't make your heart pound. I think you need a new heart. There we go. Nice one, Mark. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I want to hold them up. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Another male, I believe, isn't that? Uh, sure looks trip? like it, yeah. And a little bit of a kipe on him. Beautiful colors. I can't even imagine how pretty these fish would be in September or in October when they're spawning. Oh, baby. Oh, it's a silverfish. It's a, it's a silverfish. What you got going there? Oh, I don't know. This could be uh, something real off the wall here. Maybe a brown trout? I don't know. It could just be a fired up laker, but they sure don't like to jump like that. That was awful silver. <laughs> it was awful silver. I'm going to just get my rod right out of the way. and This uh, might be an awesome bonus fish here of some sort. Isle Royal is such a diverse fishery, um, especially midsummer. We get a lot of uh, salmon, steelhead, and even brown trout that make their way out here from nearby shore, uh, Thunder Bay, for instance. And really, they're coming out here to feed in the summer. Doesn't surprise me. Um, I've been making you net your own fish all day. I'll so do you a, a favor on this one here, awesome. though. I think this one needs a net. I listen to that drag sing. I love it. I love it. That's a beautiful thing. Oh, he wants to get you underneath the boat. Sure enough, it's a brown trout. It is indeed. We'll go if he wants to go on this side, we'll go on this side. He's taking me for a ride here. This is a fun fish. Yep. Uh-oh. Hang on to him for just a second. I got a lure stuck in the net. How could that happen in the... Most inopportune time. <laughs> that never happens in your boat, does it? Oh, geez. Usually the cleat. <laughs> well, I tell you what, just the way that fish hit, I knew it had something different on here. These brown trout just hit so darn hard when they uh, charge these stick baits. Yeah, yeah, nice one, Mark. Very nice fish. Congratulations. That Thank is a you. beautiful. What a fish. That's a beautiful brown right there. Yeah. Well, this is a really nice bonus fish out here for Isle Royal. Um, this is a brown trout, and this is actually more typical of what we find near shore around the Keweenaw on the South Shore of Lake Superior. But uh, you could tell right when he hit that bait, he meant to kill it, and he just was screaming drag ever after. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Boy, this is my favorite type of fishing out here, Mark. I can see why. I'd have to agree with Travis. There's no other place that compares to Isle Royal, and no better way to experience it than with good friends. The adventure of traveling to the island and fishing around it is second to none here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, as you can see, those guys had a ton of fun up there. Thank you so much for sharing that footage with us, guys. What we're going to do now is uh, head down below the bridge to the Osable River, where I'm going to get a few lessons on how to become a better fly fisherman. Well, we are here on the Osabo River and uh, kind of excited about tonight because we're going with the guy who I uh, fished with last year and Bill is a, 
uh, fly fishing instructor basically and I had a friend of mine who had never fly fished before come out with us and uh, it was really kind of an instructional thing and uh, and so me being very intermediate at best I thought we'd do another story with Bill this year to kind of give me some coaching on how to become a better fly fisherman I think it's kind of one of those things kind of like golf you can always improve or you can always get better and so I'm looking to get some tips on what I'm doing wrong uh, he's going to show us some new techniques that we can use uh, or that anybody can use really on the river so uh, it's just kind of stopping the rain right now, so maybe that's good. We'll see. We're going to be in a stretch of river here. We're at Connor Flats right now, uh, and we're going to do a drift for a while. And I don't know. We'll see if we can catch some fish. But um, the best thing, in my opinion, the best thing about trout fishing is being where trout live. So we'll see if we can get lucky tonight. Keep tension on him. Here's a big one. <laughs> Don't let him get in the corner. Pull him out of there. Low, no, put your right tip low, and then pull to the left. Today we would be using several different presentations to try and catch a few trout, including a newer style that not too many anglers use called Euronymphing. The idea with this presentation is to try to get your nymph to flow as natural as possible down the river. Okay, this is called European Nymphing. Alright. Okay, and basically what it is, it's about as close as you can get to getting these nymphs to travel drag free on the bottom. I put about 30 inches of amnesia here. Okay. And then I use indicator, bicolor indicator line, right? So right here, okay. See? Now, when I attach it, I attach it with a blood knot and I leave the tags here. Okay. It gives me a little more visibility. We call this a cider. Instead of indicator, when you got the line like that, it's called a cider. Okay. There's a couple other uh, variations that you can make out of mono, but this is what I use. All right. Okay. And you if, want it to be colored so you can see it, right? Yep. Usually with these different colors, no matter what time of day it is, I can see one of them. All I got to do from this point on is I add my tippet, straight okay. tippet. So with zero, you want to go no more than 5x, 5x, 6x, or 7x tippet, real light tippet. The only thing in the water is this tippet. You don't want the bicolor in the water. Oh, okay. okay. The lighter it is and the less diameter, the less effect that water is going to have on pulling or pushing that line to pull these flies. Okay. okay? Then I use a double, um, I do a, a double fly system. Okay. Now you can put your, now this one here is my dropper. I got a heavier fly there and a lighter fly here. You can just do the reverse. If I'm fishing shallow water, I'll go heavy dropper and lighter um, point fly. After spending some time nymphing without any luck, we just couldn't help but notice all the rising fish around us, so we changed back to dry flies. Shortly after, Bill hooked into a beautiful brown trout. There you go. He's big. Got him? Yep. He's big. You gonna net him? Yeah. See, that current is making it hard, too. Um, okay, now, now typically if you had this on, I would actually just start going downstream with him with the boat. And he's taking me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, when I knew I was going to retire, I wanted to do, this was kind of my dream job. So no. after I retired, I looked into what kind of credentials I could have. So I went and became a certified fly, uh, fly fishers international certified fly casting instructor. I actually, I was with the Sheriff Department, I used to teach hunter safety classes, I used to teach a boater class. I like teaching and getting people involved in the, in the outdoors in general. <laughs> My passion is fly fishing, I've been fly fishing for 40 years now. And I really, I mean, when I have a student, what I do now is I film them with a huddle system, and then I'll film them when I'm done, and they've always been better, it makes me feel good. and, and uh, I've got some people that really kept up with it and they're pretty darn good fly casters now because they practice. I'm not saying I made them that way, but they practice. And if you practice and you practice correctly, it's a, it can be a real great relaxing sport. Well, we had one rising right on the bank, a little tough spot to get at, and we made about, I don't know, six, maybe five or six casts through there and ended up taking the emerger. Pretty nice fish. Yeah, yeah it was a nice one. Rising pretty steady, so it was pretty good, pretty easy to get really, but we'll work on another one. Jimmy's working on another one out here, it's about the same size, so hopefully we'll have another one to show you in a minute. <laughs> Got him. Oh, yeah. He's in that 
logged in. After a few unsuccessful attempts on my part, Bill was able to make a nice cast and hook another big brown. This fish, however, did not want anything to do with us and immediately took off downstream. In a last ditch effort to try and land him, we pulled anchor and floated after him. Uh, just a few feet before he made it to the net, he popped off. Well, we, were, we had three fish rising. Bill caught one. I hooked up to the trees a couple times, and then uh, we were getting it in there. And finally, he took it. And but we had to run the boat and the rod at the same time, so I took the rod, which must have There's been a mistake. Up there. And uh, we got almost. I mean, we were down to almost at the fly line, getting ready to net him, and off he went. But he had his mouth wide open coming in. He's about a spit, twenty incher. About a twenty incher, and spit the hook. But that was fun. It was a good fish. Yeah, yeah. Well, fly casting can be intimidating, or people are intimidated by it because it looks difficult. They first try doing it, they can't get the fly to go out, and people start flopping. It's a pull to a stop. If you stop that rod, if you pull the line and you stop the rod tip, the rod is bent. When you stop the rod tip, the, the rod straightens out and the line flows over the tip. So the bottom line is, you know, if you go to a, a, a comparable instructor or a good friend that knows what they're doing and learn properly you just don't want to learn bad habits but if, you, if someone can teach you properly and you start uh, learning how to do it it's, it's not that difficult at all you just got to put a little time in and practice a little time and a little practice is definitely in order to become a better fly fisherman. Thanks to Bill for showing me a few things to work on, and don't be intimidated about fly fishing. It is a beautiful sport, and one of the best things about it is being where trout live. Well, hey everybody, we are here once again at Antlers Fireside Grill outside of Canadian Lakes. Jim Wood, chef extraordinaire. We got another turkey recipe. What are we going to do here, Jim? Looks like we're doing a sandwich of some, some kind. Yeah, we're going to call it a turkey cordon bleu sandwich. Cool. It's as close as we can get to it. Um, so we've got this turkey uh, that we've uh, pounded down and made very thin. Helps okay. tenderize it, cooks it a lot quicker. Gotcha. And, and we didn't marinate it or anything to it? Just Nope, no marination. Okay. Not that that wouldn't help. I mean, a little brine would help, obviously, but. Okay. So we're gonna salt it both sides, and then we're gonna go into our seasoned flour here at the restaurant. We call this our chicken flour. So it's got about seven or eight uh, different spices and herbs in it. Okay. And that's what we fry all of our chicken and things like that in. Pretty light? Yeah, it's light. Um, you know, when we finish it here, we finish it, this last step would be with a buttermilk batter. Okay. But we're gonna do an egg and panko. This will lighten it up a lot more than the way we do it here. And how many of these could you get out of a out of a one half of turkey breast you figure? One half. Two or three? Two or three easily. Okay. Yep. All right, so we've got just olive oil in the pan there. Okay. I'm on this no butter thing. I don't know why. Maybe it's just trying to be healthier. Not really. So we're just gonna go right in there. Give it a good shake to release it from the pan. So, looks like we're getting a little brown around the edges. That's when we're wanting yep. to flip? Or yeah, you want to cook it about two thirds on one side. And you're going to write, and then while it's still hot, you're just going to throw your cheese right on there. Ooh. So you're kind of a one flip guy, you only need to do it once? Yeah. I, I always tend to yeah. over flip. Any more than that and you're playing with it, you know? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And what kind of cheese do you prefer on this kind of a thing? I mean, traditionally you'd use Swiss cheese. Okay. Uh, I, I like white cheddar. This is a good Michigan white cheddar, so why not, you know? So while it's finishing cooking, we'll just pull our plate over here. And here we've got some uh, roasted garlic mayo that we make here at the restaurant. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and put that on both sides. And you need a little bit of ham on there to ch technically make it a cordon bleu, yep. right? Okay. Yep. And then we'll hit the sandwich itself with a little bit of ham. Oh boy. And it just basically needs to finish cooking at this point, which would be about another minute, minute and a half. So is wild turkey is pretty versatile type of meat then? You can do a lot of the different stuff with it or? Yeah, you just gotta remember, it's just like any other wild game. It doesn't, it doesn't have any fat, hmm. so. Um, your cooking, that's going to dictate the cooking method you use on it. Okay. Now we were just talking to Jordan about how he cooks it in a slow cooker and it breaks it down and that's a great way to do anything wild game wise. Because you can make enchiladas, tacos, you know, stuff them inside of egg rolls, make salads out of it. I mean there's all sorts of things you can do with it. So. Okay. 
All right, Jim, what's the name of this recipe? This is going to be a turkey cordon bleu sandwich. everybody. Thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. We sure do appreciate it. If you missed part of this week's show or last week's show, you can always check us out online. Our website is michiganoutofdoorstv.com. We have full episodes of the show there every week. And if you're ever on any of the social media sites, we're on most of those. We're also, if you're on YouTube, you can subscribe to our channel there and get an email every time we post something new. Lots of good stuff coming over the next several weeks. We've been out on the water in all different corners of our state. You won't want to miss that. So as always, if we don't see it in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see it right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By EOTech, a Michigan company, equipping law enforcement and sportsmen alike with quality optics, creating jobs for Michigan workers, on the web at eotechgear.com. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. With its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses, Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. Closed captioning provided by Randy's Hunting Center, serving Michigan as Ruger and Leupold's National Dealer of the Year, an inventor of Ruger's 450 Bushmaster rifle. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again, I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man, that's where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above.